In this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use custom states and option sets to add a filter to this shop catalog page. Uh, so you can see I have a number of different products. They're different colors and they're also different products. Uh, T-shirts and pants slash trousers uh, for our American viewers. Um, I'm going to focus in this video on color by using an option set. And option set is a good choice for color because uh, it is a, something that I can set on the back end. I know all the colors that are likely to be used. I can set them in as an option set. Um, but I would say it's maybe not a good choice for a category like is it a t-shirt or is it pants or trousers? Um, because if I want to be able to add categories on the front end, I can't do that with option sets. Uh, so I would see categories in this example as being a little bit more fluid. I want to give myself the possibility of creating more of those data types in the front end, whereas color, I'm confident I can lock that in in the back end um, as an option set. Uh, so if we just have a look at my data structure so that we're all on the same page, um, here's my option set for uh, colors. And if I go into my data types products, I have got a I've got a label and an image and a color set. And then if we have a look at the data, uh, here are all my data uh, entries. And then on the front end, I've got a repeating group and a place ready to put my filter. So uh, let's get started and let's put in a repeating group into the filter. And the repeating group is gonna be of type color. And I'm gonna show all colors. Uh, and a uh, number of columns can be fixed, number of rows. Uh, let's make that a bit more flexible and reduce that down to, to 20. Uh, and then I made that a little bit too small for myself. Uh, let's set the cell layout uh, to column and then uh, and insert the color. So that's the colors label. Uh, make this. Uh, if we check that on the front end, there you go, you've got a list of all my colors. Uh, so I now want to be able to check um, or, or to click on one and it to only show items in that color. Uh, so let's do this with option sets. Uh, and so I'm going to put an icon into each of the cells. Now I need to change that to uh, a row. Um, and let's add a little bit of margin to the side of it. And then uh, change it to a uh, box. Or no, I think it's square in front. Awesome. There we go. Now I've got a checkbox. Uh, let's make them a little bit larger. Brilliant. Uh, and cool, looking good. Uh, so I need somewhere to store my custom state. Custom states are a brilliant way for temporary, sorry, temporarily uh, storing data. Nothing's getting written to the database. Nothing's being stored in current user. If the page is refreshed, your um, custom states are lost. Uh, so I'm just going to store them. In fact, that'd be a little bit confusing. You can store them on any element. Just pick something logical for you. Uh, so let's call this filter uh, container. And uh, let's create a custom state in here. And we'll call it show color. And it's going to be a type color. OK. And now we need to create a workflow for if a user clicks on the box or clicks on the text. So to cut down the number of workflows we do, we're going to group them in a row, um, set the row to 100% of the width of the cell. And then now it's in the group, we can create a workflow. So when this is clicked, we set state of filter container, show color to current cells color. Uh, and then, so we can see that in action, we're going to add a conditional statement here, which is going to change the text box. So uh, that's where my custom state is stored, show color. 
So when show color is current groups color, that's referring to just the individual cell. Um, icon to check. Let's test that. Okay, and there we go. And because I haven't set it as a list, uh, every time I action it, it replaces. Um, because it, the custom state can only hold one value and it's overwritten by clicking another value. Um, now there's, there's one other thing to add in, which is what happens if I want to remove the filtering. Uh, so what's quite common on some shops is you'd have a button up here that says clear filter. Um, but to demonstrate the process with the checkbox, um, we're going to add uh, some conditional statements here. Uh, so only when um, filter container show color uh, is not uh, sales color. So it's going to enter the color if uh, it doesn't already contain that color. Um, but then I need to have the opposite. And I find that color coding these really helps. So green is when data is being added. Red is going to be when data is removed. So then I invert this statement. So when the filters custom state show color is current sales color, I'm going to, and here's a little trick with custom states. If you want it empty, you just leave it empty. So I still get the same effect, but then if I click on it again, it clears it. Now, how do I get this to impact my repeating group? So obviously when the page loads, I want everything to appear. So I've just got search products with no constraints. Uh, and then for the purpose of this demonstration, let's do it this way. So when um, filter container show color is not empty, I'm going to change the data source. And so the data source is going to be search for products where color equals uh, filter container color. Let's see how well that works. So black, and then you get black, white, white, uh, red, got no green, pink. So there you have it uh, in less than eight minutes. That's how you can create the beginnings of a product page with filtering using custom states and option sets. In a future video, we'll explore uh, how you might use different categories, like different types of clothing. Um, and so watch out for that. We'll be recording that soon.